Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rentway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for Friday, November 11th, 2022. Well, yesterday, wow, what a big day. One of the bigger percentage moves days that we have seen. Well, I've only seen a few of these kind of moves um, over the course of my entire career. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. And one of the things I'm going to say is uh, today I decided I'm not going to do a blog. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spend that extra time with a little bit more time in the video so that I can and try to get this video out early enough that you can utilize the whole thing with just some thoughts because markets like this create an awful lot of emotion and can many times also create an awful lot of mistakes. So let's take a look at these charts first and see if we can figure out how we may want to approach the market for today and then we'll get into some of those other things. First off, if we take a look here, we have certainly had an amazing rally to the upside. Just tremendous moves here in the market and you'll want to notice that we broke that downtrend here in the Dow. Now we still have a situation here in the chart where we are running into a significant price resistance level in our chart here. I mean huge price resistance um, in this chart as you can see all of these data points right along that area. And we'll want to watch that pretty closely as we press up in the pre-market. We're getting a big pop here this morning, trying to continue that move to the upside as we have for quite some time, just pump and pump and pump in the pre-market. So one of the things I want to point out here is just how steep a move this is in the diamonds. If you'll notice, that is this part of this move here is a, a virtual parabolic move to the upside um, with very little rest in between. And so our Dow is very, very extended here in the short term. Now that doesn't mean we can't continue to extend. I'm just pointing out the fact that it does increase the danger of a move. And we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. If we take a look at our technicals in the chart, man, we just rip right through the 500 day moving average. So what I want to point out is we went from way down here below every moving average and without much of a, a stop, big volatility, but without much of a stop, we zoomed right back up here. And let's think about the the situation here in our economy that's created that. We have to remember that um, as even though we're uh, we're continuing to progress through earnings, those earnings haven't been all that stellar. We have seen that the Federal Reserve is going to continue um, um, raising rates, and although we had a small decrease in. Um, the rate of inflation to 7.7% inflation, we still have, that is, <laughs> it wouldn't have been just a few months ago, that number would have scared the market to death. Um, and although the Fed will probably um, ease up on rate increases, they're still going to increase rates because our consumer prices still went up by 0.4% on the month. So you'll want to think about that. The consumer is still stressed and strained. Now, this extension that we see in the market, we know how quickly this market can whipsaw. Um, so we'll want to be a little bit careful as we approach that market. And again, we're going to talk about that here in just a bit. But as you can see, very, very bullish in this chart. This may signal a change in the market, may signal a change that the all clear has been sounded. We'll see if that's actually the case um, after we settle down just a little bit. Let's take a look at our SPY. 
SPY, big move to the upside yesterday, big stretch. Let's kind of keep in mind how far we did move from, a com you know, on a complete overnight reversal. Big volume came into the day. Now you want to think about that because sometimes volume like that, a lot of that buying that came in here was probably short squeeze selling um, where they they had to buy them uh, buy out of their short positions to close those down um, to generate such a big move in that chart now if we take a look at our spy we're also now pushing up here into that downtrend resistance and we will want to keep in mind that the spy has been lagging significantly behind the other indexes and we did break through this resistance yesterday which honestly pretty surprising how we just ripped through there yesterday and as we look up into here we have significant resistance above so we will want to keep in mind we've got the downtrend and we've got um, price resistance in this chart to be considering it runs all the way back over here so we'll want to watch that fairly closely as we approach those levels and um, technically in the chart big push through our 200 day moving average I think there's a pretty good chance that we could test our our, our 50-day moving average is a pretty good chance we could test our 200-day moving average at this point but we'll want to be pretty careful as we stretch this market up remember there's some danger involved here then let's take a look at our uh, QQQ now QQQ has been the weakest in the market and we've had quite a change here um, just yesterday with a big spike up and we pressed ourselves right up into that resistance level of the chart and that's a fairly significant resistance area we'll have to see if we can pop on through there um, to to break this out but we'll also want to consider that as we do that we'll be reaching up here toward a um, a resistance downtrend that we'll want to be thinking about in the chart so watch that close now the QQQ on a technical basis well it's a nice change breaking above the 50 day moving average but we will want to consider the fact that it's fairly normal um, when we stretch like this that we do get some kind of a pullback so we'll want to watch for that possible pullback back to the 50 and if we were to get a pullback in here that would make for a healthy um, entry position into the trade and in uh, a beautiful entry trade if that were to occur now if we could just just continue to stretch and stretch and stretch it does add an awful lot of danger to this market let's take a look at our IWM our IWM stretched up as well yesterday with a big push here to the upside we pressed into that resistance and this morning we're trying to pop that resistance in the pre-market and you can see that we've got significant resistance above this would be a pretty substantial resistance level in the IWM and if we run a trend out here notice we'll be running into the downtrend and that price resistance area about the same time and here again technically if we take a look quite a change here pushing for right up through the 50 we held that 50 in here nice little hold pressing right up to the 200 I would call this a better technical pattern than we see in most of the in other indexes right now because we did make that move albeit very choppy we did make that move back held in here and now back to the 200 so that's a better technical pattern but still quite extended here in the market. So let's take a look at our, um, our VIX. Our VIX made a big move yesterday, breaking down substantially. So a complete reversal back down. And we will want to watch that fairly closely. As you guys remember, I've been talking about that 25 handle. Suddenly we just don't have any fear in the market. Um, even though we still have a lot of um, economic problems to deal with um, here and likely a substantial recession um, into next year because we continue to see a bond inversion. Now, although those bond rates have pulled back, we still see a substantial bond inversion that if you go to the FOMC website or the Federal Reserve website and go check it out, there's never been a time when we've had that, that I can find in all of the history on the FOMC 
that a bond inversion didn't create a substantial recession. So you'll want to keep an eye on that um, because I think we still have those problems yet to come here in the market. Um, let's take a look. We've got a little bit of price support in here. That could mean, you know, with a big move like we've had, we could see that possibility of the pop and drop here this morning where we gap up and then immediately start getting some selling. But I also wouldn't rule out that possibility that we could pop this morning and just keep this fire going because there's a lot of fear of missing out and there could be a lot of folks rushing to get into this move this morning. So Fridays are one of those days that that can occur. So watch that carefully. Now, if we were to take a look at our T2122, well, this is starting to show us a major problem here in T2122. As you can see, we went from all the way down here to all the way up here all in one day, and we're trying to gap up higher this morning. So we're gonna be pinned pretty close to the high here in, um, in T2122 and probably showing us a substantial overextension in the short term. Now, emotional markets will do that, but we'll have to be really, really careful on the chase to that upside move. And that's what we are gonna spend a little time talking about here in just a bit. But you gotta give this up to the bulls. The bulls are very, very strong. If we take a look at T2108, boy, T2108 really took off like a rocket yesterday. And um, almost 75% of the stocks above their 40 day moving average. Now, we've done this once before. If you remember, um, early on, earlier on this year, we rallied all the way up here and then bang, got that major reversal to the downside. So I'm not saying that's going to occur again, but we will want to consider the fact that we're starting to get overextended in the short term here in the market, that we've just pressed so far, so fast, that that overextension here in the market could mean a pullback is on the way soon. It may not be today, but a pullback is on the way and it could be substantial because we've stretched so far in the market. Now, if we take a little a look at T2107, T2107 is showing us that same thing. And here's the thing with T2107, we've even broken that little late summer rally right in here. We broke that high and we've stretched even higher, 44.71% of the stocks. Um, holding above their 200 day moving average or making it above their 200 day moving average. We will want to consider that stretch here because that is um, an amazing reversal from way down here to way up here all of a sudden. So we are getting pretty overextended and that does, you know, raise that risk that we could see a substantial pullback at any point in time. So we'll want to be watching for that and be ready for that as we move forward. If we take a look at our T2101, interesting move here in T2101 on our market breadth. We actually saw a reversal here um, back up in T2101, reversing that back to the upside here pretty sharply. Um, so that might mean we could be reaching the end of that move, that that momentum may quickly shift here in the market. Now let's jump back here and um, let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. In our economic calendar, well, we don't have much going on today. That's one of the reasons why I think there is that possibility that we could continue to see um, a little bit of push to the upside because there really isn't anything standing in the way today. We'll have a consumer sentiment number. Um, consensus is ex expecting that number to be a little bit light, um, coming in a little bit under um, last time. But we've also had this amazing capacity here in the market to just kind of ignore it. Um, so watch that um, this, this morning um, may not be a major impactor on the market at all. And then all we've, else we've got is the Baker Hughes rig count, which you know, I don't think uh, is going to make any difference at all in the market. And if we take a look at our earnings calendar, we have a lot of companies listed on the earnings calendar, but almost all of them are very, very small cap. 
they're not going to be market moving at all. So um, although there's probably 20, 25 companies that are confirmed to report, there's really not much in there for us to um, to worry about. I only pulled out two stocks as potentially notable, um, and they're really not all that notable. AQN will be reporting today, so we've got a utility in here reporting. There's actually another couple other utilities, but they're very, very small cap um, type stocks. So keep an eye on AQN. And then SPB would be another that you might want to keep an eye on. It's been rallying up toward that downtrend resistance. Um, so watch that this morning for that report. And that's about all on the earnings, um, earnings calendar this morning. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could please do me that favor and please click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to continue to grow. Thank you so much for everyone who's going through it clicking the thumbs up button on other folks's comment it's that engagement that makes a difference and I really appreciate it and if you guys feel this video is, is worthy enough please share it out there on your um, social media feed it helps other people find it and I truly appreciate it um, for every little bit of support that you guys give the channel thank you much now let's um, take a look here at um, some of these stocks and remember guys these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security and you'll want to keep in mind that we have to be really really careful here with this extension to the upside because there could be um, a substantial pullback on the way now what I wanted to chat about here this morning and, and extend this video out just a little bit, and I hope you guys don't mind to indulge me here, but one of the things we have to think about in the market is to remember that it really doesn't matter what we feel about the market. It matters what the price action is telling us. Now, the price action is certainly telling us that something has changed here, that we are bullish. So if you've been a bear for a long period of time, well, we may have to start shifting that attitude to the bullish side here if we're truly going to break these downtrends and and hold some higher lows but having said that i want to let uh, pass on the fact that um, the fear of missing out is a very strong emotion and one of the things that um, i see a lot of folks make a mistake on is they rush to a trade because they're just so fearful of missing out in a position and we have to think very carefully about what we can actually control in the market we know this market has the capacity of very big point moves and very big point whipsaws so that in mind if we if we use that fear of missing out um, in that move if we allow that emotion to direct our trading well we can actually chase into a trade and end up even though the market remains bullish end up losing substantial amounts of money because of that chase. So I want you to consider this carefully. There's only two real things that we can control in the market, and that would be the entry that we take and how much risk we take in that trade. Now, it doesn't matter to me if you look at a chart like this and say, um, I believe the stop loss, if I were to enter the diamonds here, that the stop loss would, would be underneath the tail of yesterday. Okay, that's, that's perfectly fine. But I want you to think very, very carefully how far that is down. Um, we're talking about, at this point, over 1,400 points in the Dow down to that price support in the chart. So you have to consider that is a huge percentage move back down. If I were to pick this up right in here on the diamonds, um, that pop-up area and move just down into here, you have to be thinking about that substantial pullback in here that could be 
15, 1600 points, and can you actually withstand that? So if we're looking at trades for an entry, we wanna make sure that we're taking trades that have low risk entry points into the trade. So that's one of the ways we can um, remove that emotion, that fear of missing out as we plan our entry into the trades. Now for me, the my stop loss has to be down here. So this is just a ridiculous, um, um, stop loss uh, down in here. That's my last swing low. That's where I see the buyers have actually stepped into a trade in that reversal back to the upside. So there's no way that I could trade the diamonds here because I can't control uh, my risk to any logical risk point in the market. And if you think about these gaps that we've seen in the market, we've had a tendency of, of filling those eventually. So, um, that's the stop loss I would have to take in that trade. And if you choose to take a stop loss that's just arbitrary, you just pick at something, well, I'm gonna buy this trade, but I'm gonna put the, my stop loss right in here. You're likely putting yourself in a situation, if you're not respecting the price action of the chart, you're likely putting yourself in a situation where you're going to just get stopped out. Um, lots of whipsaw in this market. We have to remember that you know, when we move in these big point moves, that we can go the other way just as fast. So make sure you're planning your trades very, very carefully. Now, having said that, what I want to look for when I'm looking for a trade is I want to look for those stocks that have relatively low risk entry to my stop loss. You know, uh, what I mean by that is I can plan that trade carefully enough that there's not a whole lot of additional risk in jumping into a position. So let's take for example like a KHC. Now KHC is setting up in a interesting pattern. Notice we've got this nice little cup type pattern, a little handle out here in this trade, and we are struggling with this price resistance in the chart. But what I have here is a nice little platform position in here where I really wouldn't have to take an awful lot of risk to jump into a trade like this, but I'd wait for the buy signal to occur. One of the things that I like to do is I like to look for charts that are setting up I don't want to chase the big white candle. And that's one of the things I'm seeing a lot when I'm working with people in coaching. They're spending too much time chasing that big white candle in the market and they're not actually planning to the risk of their trade, which means they're struggling this year because with the whipsaw in the market, um, you probably, are, a lot of folks are probably thinking that um, last year when I did this, everything worked. It was just working really, really well. I made great money. Everything was, was going well. And that's because we didn't have the volatility that we have right now. But if you haven't changed the way you trade right now, you're probably suffering this year dramatically because of the volatility of that move these moves. So we want to make sure when we plan those trades, we're looking for those low risk entry positions and we're not just chasing those big white candles. So take for example, a stock like Caterpillar. Caterpillar is on a major tear to the upside. But if we really take a look at that chart, what we can see here is an incredible amount of long side danger running into this chart. Sure, we could pop through that. We could pop through it temporarily, but the high probability is Caterpillar is going to pull back and it's going to pull back substantially because this is a straight up parabolic move in the chart. And if it doesn't just collapse back down, which I wouldn't say suggest that it would, it could go into a very long, wide ranging chopping situation in the market, which makes it very, very difficult. Now, particularly if you're trading options, this can be a very, very dangerous position to jump into because what happens when we explode in a move like this is the um, implied volatility of an option, of all options, go up. So our implied volatility goes up. And we want to think about that as an option trader. If that implied volatility shoots up, what that means is that the extrinsic value of our options, that's the time value of our options, explodes as well. So we can be in a position that looks really, really good, very, very bullish, 
and you've probably experienced some of this recently where you've entered long positions or short positions in the market, thought you had a great trade setup, and then just found that it had a difficult time in making that trade pay. And one of the reasons that can be is that implied volatility is so high, and if we get another explosion in volatility, well, that just adds more cost to every single trade that you make. And then if that volatility starts to pull back a little bit, if we rest, if we consolidate, all of a sudden, you may still have the overall direction correct and lose money on the trade because of that explosion in implied volatility. And yesterday was an extreme explosion in implied volatility. For So for you option traders out there, I would be really, really careful as we continue to stretch to the upside. What that means is the time value of those options has become very, very expensive. And even if we get just a rest, if we don't pull back, not saying, you know, if, if we don't collapse, to the to the upside and just rest um, in the market, you can still lose a substantial amount of money in those options because that implied volatility then contracts, comes more back to normal, and that um, that time value drops out of those options really quickly. So I want to caution everyone to be really, really careful in your option purchases, particularly on directional long call and put trades. Now, for the stock trader in here, there's also that major risk that you take in a trade like this, that if we do pull back substantially um, in that, there's certainly an easy opportunity for a substantial pullback in a stock like this. And um, that could be very painful as well if you chase into a trade. So what we wanna do is we wanna be looking for those stocks that are giving us low risk entry trades, and we wanna be looking for technically correct patterns. I'm gonna go to the QQQ here to just give you an example of what I mean by a technically correct pattern. One of the things that I look for in a chart is support resistance and trend. So if we take a look here and notice that we were in a downtrend and suddenly we whipped back up. Now we want to consider here carefully that we broke that downtrend and that's a great thing to see in the market and we're approaching a major resistance area in the chart. Now that puts me at a danger place. And one of the major problems that I had in my trading, one of the major mistakes I made too many times is I would chase that big white candle and I tended to buy stocks on that chase right near price resistance levels in the chart. Now what that, and, and this just can't even be a surprise because I would look back at trades and go, what was I thinking? Because could you be at all surprised if QQQ either has to pull back from here or go through a longer consolidation here to rest through that place in the chart? Um, that really couldn't even be a major surprise in that position. So a technically correct pattern requires that when we break a downtrend, when we move up like this, that we actually can prove that we're going to hold and not just turn around and whipsaw all the way back down. Because think about the point move that we had in here. Could we easily do a pop and drop today that move us back down like that? And would anybody be surprised at that looking at these candles here in the chart? It's very, very possible that that could occur. So what we want to be looking for is we want to be looking for that technically correct pattern. These great big moves like this are wonderful. It reverses the market. It could mean that we're going to turn a bearish market bullish. But let's wait for the proof before we rush in with our hard-earned money. Let's wait and see if we can actually hold a higher low. And if we do continue to move on higher, that doesn't change that move. If we break through this resistance and push on up, let's wait and see if we can now hold that new area of support before we run headlong into the market. Because if we get, this will give us a lower risk entry trade. Our stop loss would be closer in the move. And as a matter of fact, that first higher low is what actually creates the uptrend. 
So think about that. We're really not missing out until we can actually prove higher levels of support in the chart. So I hope this was made some sense to you. And, and the reason I want to do this is um, that I wanted to do this is I've been doing an awful lot of individual coaching um, with folks and seeing a lot of pain in, in people's accounts because this emotion is driving them rather than the price action of the chart. So when you're looking for trades, we want to look for those kind of trades that are setting up in good patterns that have nice, tight, support level patterns in the chart that we've supporting off a trend and then we look for that entry into the position we don't want to chase that big stretched out candle because it puts an awful lot of risk on our trades and we want to avoid that fear of missing out that emotional trading let's do a little more thought thinking let's do a little bit more planning let's think about how much risk we have to our stop that will help us enter these trades with much more confidence and we should have a better win-loss ratio. If you can't find those trades that show a whole lot of sense to you, if the market just doesn't feel right to you, it's okay to stand aside. Remember, the market's going to be here tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. If you want an example of this, um, I picked up a trade in XLE, and this XLE trade is nothing fancy. This is just a inverted head and shoulders pattern trade that I got into. Um, at the close of today, or close of yesterday, I'm up 67% in this trade. And as a matter of fact, I've already taken half the profit off and over 70% profit on the trade. So what that means is, is we don't have to have a trade every single day, but if we work carefully to pick the right trades, we can actually trade less and make more money. So think about that carefully. Instead of just rushing and throwing your money at the market, let's be a little bit more selective and think carefully about the entry of the trade and how we can manage that trade. And maybe we could trade less and make more money if we're not in such a big rush to throw risk at this at the market. So think about that. Um, I want to wish you guys all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. And by the way, I want to also, I, I rarely talk about this at all, but we we do this kind of conversation in right way options virtually every single day um, that we're trading. We're really picky about the entries in the trade. And as a matter of fact, this has been, and it could end up being my record profit year for all the years I've been trading, almost 30 years. It may be my record profit year this year. And we really haven't traded that much. What we have traded, we've held a little bit longer and we've turned them into some really nice profit positions um, on the year. So if you're looking for a place, if you're looking for a place that you would like to get some help and improve that trading and remove some of that promotional aspect of the trading, um, you know, give us a look. Um, you can come over, you can take a free trial, see if we fit you um, in right way options. And just go to the Hit and Run Candlesticks website if you wanna take that, uh, take a look at that. Spent a lot of time instructing and teaching the proper setup for option trades, trying to avoid that emotion, making sure we're doing the best job we can in technical analysis when we enter those trades and try to produce a high win-loss ratio overall in our positions. We may not trade as much as you think you need to trade, but we're actually making more money. So think about that carefully. You guys have a wonderful day. Have an awesome, awesome weekend. And I'll see you right back here, bright and early Monday morning. Thanks everyone for taking the extra time and listening. And I hope this was helpful. Wish you all the best.